Right. Apparently, I had no sound there. Hopefully, you can hear me now. Uh, let's just make sure that that's... Uh... <laughs> Let me check that. Right. Hopefully, you've got me back again now. Yes. Sorry. Sorry, everybody. That ruined that joke at the beginning then, didn't it? See? Uh, right. Evening all. What I was saying is, Tina Weston, I can't believe you let this one happen. The countdown begins, can't wait. I love that the countdown begins and you can't wait, but it's the countdown be gins you know it there should be a dash between the e and the g there but welcome to episode 57 uh great to see you piling in with all the comments uh tony olds watching on youtube by the looks of it evening castle coom tv tim perry good evening everyone dilly dilly not long to go now i know it really isn't is it steve weston will be on in a little bit and we'll talk about the season ahead and the bits and pieces happening paul wiltshire evening all uh, and you'll see that Castle Coombe Circuit has put Read Our David George tribute here, and you'll be able to see that, and we'll come on to that. I'm going to play a video in a minute, and I've uh, got a very, very special guest that's going to come in and uh, and have a chat about um, a mutual friend of ours, as, as he really is. Mutual friend of all of ours. Uh, getting nearer by the day. Look at this. All you people saying no, no noise. See, that's what you people dream of. Uh, <laughs> you got me now. Better. See, Carl Alden says better. Now, I don't know whether you did that before or after I bought the sound back, to be honest with you. Same as uh, Tim Perry. You may have said that before I put it back. Uh, Nigel Forrest up at Alton Park. Evening, Chris. Yes, can hear you. Jin Jin. Jin Jin indeed, my friend. Welcome to the show, mate. Uh, Rob Drew, another one of our Mighty Orange Army. Evening all. Stuart Tinker Taylor, good evening, Chris from the Fuffer Lover. He is, he loves his Formula Fords. PS can't hear you. Hopefully, you can now, mate. Uh, Keith Rain, good evening, everyone. The season's almost upon us. Hooray! It certainly is, mate. Are you down start line again? I still love it when I put your picture up that you've got our, um, uh, our, our t shirt, the Dilly Dilly t shirt on as well. Matt Coyle, the uh, Saloon Car Championship Coordinator. Good evening, everyone, and our very own Emma Strawford. Hey, all. Hi, Em. Welcome to the show. Now, we need to start off with something that we all really hit us hard um, this year. I know that he has been, this month, sorry, I know that he's been very, very unwell, but you still kind of put off what you know is going to happen at some point, but sadly, we have lost David George. Now, I'm just going to play a video and we're going to spend a little while talking about this, the voice of Castle Coombe. On February the 5th, 2022, we received the sad news that we lost the voice of Castle Coombe, David George. After 45 years of commentating and in excess of five decades of working with the circuit in different forms, he will be very sadly missed. His enthusiasm, his excitement, his chuckle ringing from the old paddock commentary box is something that got so many of us absolutely hooked on motor racing and hooked on Castle Coombe Circuit. For me, that went even further because it got me hooked on commentating and he supported me when I was lucky enough to join him and the commentary team. My only sadness is that I didn't get to co-commentate with him more than I, I actually did. Then it's uh, Mark Watton and 84, uh, Carlton Williams, and the rest streaming through, just having a look there to see where Mark Fennell was, because uh, Mark uh, had a bad day yesterday, he had a, uh, a loss of power due to a split intercooler pipe, and uh, today he's got that sorted, and hopefully the power is back on again. He will be gone, but not forgotten. That is very clear. So many people will always remember him walking the paddock with clipboard and program in hand chatting with everybody that he classed as friends. He used to race himself so he had an understanding of it. He was passionate as everybody that spent their waking hours at the circuit. And yes, fine, he used that information in his commentary. But he could never get enough of the racing and the people within it. And it's us and as people within it that will remember David George forever. The voice of Castle Coombe may be gone, but never forgotten. Rest in peace, David George.
Well, um, <clears throat> uh, understandably, quite uh, a, a, a choke up from from that one, to say the least. And I hope I've done him uh, some justice uh, with 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 the words there. And and it's the very least I can do. For those of you who uh, who are able to. Um, his funeral is open to everybody and it would be lovely to get as many of us as possible there. Uh, it is in Bristol. If you again go to the uh, Castlecombe circuit.co.uk, go to the news page and the David George tribute is there. Um, and I'm pretty certain that the link to his, uh, with, with the details of, uh, of, of David George, in fact, I'm just quickly going to copy this now because uh, it buys me time as well. But uh, <laughs> um, I've just posted, hopefully that goes to all of the different things where it will see the, 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 the David George much loved and it is the details I will be, which when you consider how I'm doing now is that quite a, a, an ask, but uh, it, absolutely humbling is that his, his wife Dot uh, contacted me and asked me to say a few words as well. Uh, not the eulogy, obviously, um, but I am saying a few words at, uh, at there. David George, someone that uh, uh, was just so supportive, really, really helped him in the early stages. And as a five-year-old sat at Quarry Corner, he uh, was uh, one half of the voice, of the voices, sorry, that got me absolutely hooked on both motor racing and Castlecombe Circuit. And I'm delighted to say I'm one half of that. Not the circumstances we'd have liked, and I am going to do another show uh, in due course with this gentleman and, and someone I, I'm very lucky to class as a friend as well. It's the other half of the voices of Castle Coombe. I'm going to bring in Richard Davis. Richard, so good to see you, my friend. Not the circumstances either of us would like, but uh, I think we mutually are uh, fond of the great man. Indeed. Um, that was, if I might say so, um, rather nice. Thanks, Chris. Uh, thank you, Richard. Thank you. And I think that both of us, you can hear it in both of our voices that that just caught us a little bit. I thought I was all composed, but it got, got me there as well. Um, Richard, it really is so special to, to have you on. The two of you were the voices of Castle Coombe uh, for, for so many of us. And I know that you hate it because it makes me age you every time I say that. But... Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yes. When when uh, David George started uh, at the very last race meeting in 1973, which upset you, and I reminded you it was as long ago as that, but because uh, uh, you you had actually already been commentating prior to that, hadn't you? Yes, indeed. Um, I was, uh, shall we say, uh, involved with the circuit and dragged into it very happily. I might add. Um, in I can't remember the exact year, but certainly it's the late 60s. And um, I'd known Howard Strawford in a, a competitive spirit uh, since the 1950s when he used to uh, drive a very hotly modified Austin A35, to which the people who aren't over 40 some odd years of age will uh, say, what the hell is an Austin A35? But it was uh, one of the cars that you used to tune up and uh, make it go well. But yeah, I, I got to Coombe in the late 60s and um, I was kind of lucky enough to take over from a guy called Nick Corey. But uh, David joined and uh, immediately, seriously, it became very much like Morecambe and Wise. We became joined at the hip. And um, you know as a commentator yourself that one of the great things is when two people can talk to each other and uh, at the same time, not over talk each other and just know when to automatically cross over and david was perfect at that he was absolutely great and also the fact that he'd got racing experience with his mini which of course we used to pull his leg like mad you know because he'd turn around <laughs> in the middle of the mini race and say well i don't know what he's doing i wouldn't have done that and we'd all go oh god here we go again but uh, he enjoyed that. He enjoyed that. It was Mickey taking meant with the best of, of uh, reasons behind it uh, to a, a complete enthusiast. And that's that was David. Absolutely magic. I, I know as well that I'm sure that people that are, are watching this now are, are going to be just loving the fact that hearing your voice again as well, because those were the two voices. I used to make the comment that you could blindfold me 
uh, drive me and then kick me out of the car at, at the circuit and then hear uh, yours and David voices come out of the speakers, I would know exactly where I was. So I know that there is going to be so many of, you, of the viewers now listening to your voice and, and, and just being taken back. I mean, he... Um, he, he's such. He was such a humble man, though, wasn't he? Because he yeah. uh, w w was so. I, I remember that that I sort of did the interviewing for a little while to start with, as as you'd expect. Yeah. You got to sort of you know do the ropes, and and he would be over. He loved the, the old paddock, preferred that, and we'll come on to that in a minute. But he. Um, it took a while before I actually got to co-commentate. So I was in the main box, and him over there, and I opened up with this big. Um, uh, diatribe about the fact that you know i was like humbled that i'm actually at last getting to speak to the voice that i'd grown up and he didn't really know what to do with that he didn't realize and his family are finding this now he didn't realize and you might be able to relate to this just how popular he was oh uh, absolutely it's it's um it, it it comes across and he came across because of his uh, love of motor cars love of talking about his events and uh, his experiences to all sorts of people and uh, certainly david was one of the most approachable i mean let's be quite blunt uh, you know and uh, i know that not all commentators are uh, very approachable but david no problems at all he'd stop and talk to absolutely everybody and um, socially i didn't have because he's in bristol and i was across in monmouth and um you know we didn't meet that often but when we did uh the hours just used to melt away absolutely and we talk about uh, the drivers the marshals what's happening at coombe the the background noise uh, that uh, we all know and the chatter that goes on and um yes a humble man and uh, absolutely fantastic character no, agreed. And thank you, everybody, for the comments coming in. Uh, obviously, a lot of you is here. And uh, and thank you for the comments that I, I hope it was, you know, a, a, a tribute to, that was worth, worthy of him. And and I took a risk there with putting a bit of his commentary voice in. I managed to find from a video um, because it kind of strikes a nerve. But I just thought it was worth putting. That's why I know a lot of people love hearing your voice as, as well, Richard. But um, you, you also admitted earlier when we were speaking that you commentated at the circuit for what was it 20 26 years yeah yeah which kind of is is just mind blown that puts into perspective his 45 years is incredible isn't it absolutely amazing and um i i, I think his old paddock commentary box was rebuilt twice because um it's certainly rebuilt once because uh uh, when it rained, which let's face it, at Castle Coombe it often does, and <laughs> terrible. And uh, I can I can still remember one August Monday meeting when, in fact, we had snow going down the main street. I mean, ridiculous, but that's Britain. And um, you know, the commentary box it used to be wetter inside than outside, and eventually Howard relented and got some uh, material put onto the box so that David's programme didn't get quite as wet as it used to. No, and I remember reading a story, actually, that he was saying that I think in the early stages that it was like, it was on scaffolding that, that kind of had to be sort of dug into the ground to give it any kind of uh, stability. And there had been a storm and they went round there ready to commentate and it was gone and it was like some kind of water loo, but without the loo in it. And so they decided to sit outside instead. Oh, yeah, well, it must have been a good day. But, um, yeah, I remember that. And then, um, you know, they, it was upgraded and made much nicer. And, um, and uh, David, of course, uh, doing commentary. And ably assisted, if I might say so, by uh, Tony Allen, who was uh, uh, another guy who is uh, with strong links right the way back with his wife, Jill, uh, at Castle Coombe and actually was it last year or the year before that he was given they were given the um, Strawford trophy in memory of uh, uh, yes, I, I feel humbled that I was able to be the one on the on the microphone giving the award to both David George because David George got recognized I think the year before and then it was it must have been two years ago that that uh, Tony right. and Gil were uh, uh, and rightly so and I have to say by the way is that 
I know that this has hit those two very, very hard. Uh, Tony was the first person to let me know the sad news on uh, Saturday, the 5th of February, that the call had come in that that morning. He'd, he, he passed away peacefully with his family, which is good news, and uh, or as good news as it can be. And, and I know that it's hit him hard. And Tony and Jill are absolute institutions, aren't they, at, at the circuit? They've, they've worked. I, I'm very lucky that I've been able to work with them in the commentary box as well. And... And as you say, Tony and David, and I kind of going back to sort of like looking fondly back at the memories is that you must have had it in your time as well, is that the almost bickering between David George and Tony yeah. Allen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah I'd, uh, uh, I mean, see, Tony, let me see, I'm, I'm sure we can talk about him uh, at another time. Um, his wife, Jill, used to do the lap scoring for me across at the main control. So between everything, it was a, a quartet of people that were uh, enthusiasts, and we uh, it all made it happen. I mean, see, things that, that uh, people enjoy don't just happen. There's a lot of work goes on into the background. David used to uh, spend hours on the telephone, I know, with various club secretaries and uh, championship secretaries, asking them details about this, that, and the other. And the great thing about him was also that he would happily share this information with uh, yours truly, which helped a lot because, um, as you know, uh, when you're working sort of six, seven days a week and then you, you seem to manage to take some time off at a weekend to uh, spend it talking all day to uh, lots of lovely people about lots of lovely people, um, it does get a bit sort of uh, difficult to do all things. But uh, David would... Uh, go around the paddock, as you said in your piece, and uh, talk to everybody. Everybody knew him, I mean, say that. And that slight Bristol accent, uh, immediately recognisable and beautiful. Uh, and it's, uh, that's quite an interesting one, because I um, hadn't re realised some of the things that I'd learnt from him without deliberately studying or anything like that. I, I, I didn't set out to do it. Um, and that included, I said it in the piece on the uh, the news article on the Castle Coombe Circuit um, news page, was that the, the, the walking around the paddock and catching up with everybody was a big deal. Now, I'll be honest to say, I think I started that, and he probably did, in all honesty, knowing him, was, yes, you get information, but it's a privilege that you get to go and be part of that community. You know, the everybody that's racing, and I'm, I, I've always felt like I'm kind of an intruder lucky to be there because I just get to talk about the Goliaths out on circuit at the end of the day um, and, and communicate with the, the, the fans around the circuit. But he did that and I, I, I inadvertently learned that. And the one that I learned from both of you, and you touched on it already, and I said it in a piece, is it's not that you go and do commentating. You have a conversation about what's going on in front of you with your co-commentator, which is where the bounce off each other is good, and yeah. with the spectators around the circuit. I, I, that was one of the nice things. And, um, you know, uh, looking down at the crowd sometimes, as you know, you don't get much time to do that. And uh, you see people looking up at you and uh, giving you the thumbs up. Thankfully, not too many gave the thumbs down. But um, you know, no, it was great. And um, David, and I'll include Tony in this, because um, Tony isn't too well also at the present moment. But uh, those two together, they had their own little crowd, if you like, their followers down at the old paddock there. And uh, it, it, it was quite a little gang. They were, they were very, very loyal, very, very supportive of everything and um, drinks and sandwiches and all sorts of things used to go up in their direction because uh, <laughs> otherwise they were very hungry or very thirsty indeed sometimes. <laughs> Absolutely. I love it as well, um, uh, just picking up. Obviously, we've got loads of comments uh, that I've been putting up on screen. Uh, regards, David. And lovely to have the comment in here. Steve George says, thank you, Chris. He just loved the coom." and all of you and you could tell that it wasn't forced at all was it and you and i can relate to this because so do we but you know he he, he didn't force that love it was natural well it, he basically didn't do commentary all over the place um, and um, castle coon was his home his home circuit it was his home crowd 
and um, everybody, it, it, it just worked. I mean, say, if things are genuine, I believe that um, it comes across. If you're not being genuine and honest about things, people can tell. But he was absolutely 110% genuine, loved everything that happened at Coombe, and uh, I can't remember him actually turning around and, and being rude or derogatory with regard to anybody or anything, no matter what. His rule, based from his days in motor racing, was that everybody did their best. Even if they failed, they'd still done their best. And that must come from the fact that, of course, he used to uh, uh, do a bit of rallying. Uh, uh, yeah. Nosworthy, his good friend David Nosworthy was telling me, uh, and certainly a lot of auto soloing, uh, auto soloing. And apparently he used to make this mini go and beat things he really shouldn't have been beating. Well, uh, if you um, were with David um, driving in convoy on a road somewhere, uh, I can assure you of one thing. He was competitive, to say the least, on the road. Uh, speed limits were regarded as something that you had to beat by the biggest possible market. <laughs> and, uh, yes. And um, no matter where he went, it was uh, tires squealing, rubber coming off, smoke. And he'd get out of the car with uh, a big grin on his face. And uh, that, that was it. He, he just absolutely loved it. And he's, um, yeah, that, that was his way of doing things. And then coming to the circuit and uh, talking about motor racing and what people were doing. And it came naturally to him. It really did. Yeah, you always got that feeling he felt privileged, which, again, I've always said is something I can definitely relate to, is that, that always feel that. And I loved your comment that you did that I, I, I stole to put as quotes from you in the news piece on the, on the circuit, where you said that um, he loved having those conversations with people. And if, if motor racing and cars were involved in that, all the better. And, oh, yeah, absolutely. And summed it up. <laughs> I mean, it, it, socially... Um, at the circuit, we used to meet up after a race meeting, but somehow that dropped away. And um, I think family commitments and so forth, and let's face it, uh, that's important. And um, seeing him socially, you'd always find him, uh, if you weren't talking to him or spending some time with somebody else, um, he'd be in the corner by the bar there, a, a nice drink in his hand and, uh, you go across to him, and uh, the first thing you'd hear is, well, yes, I was doing this, and, oh, you're doing that, and you've done that to your car. And uh, it, it, it was just, he was an enthusiast, absolutely, to the to the end. I mean, say, and uh, to be fair, he was a bit like a stick of rock. If you cut him in half, you'd find Castle Coombe Circuit all the way through. A hundred percent. Like you say, is that he always used to say to me that he... he... Uh, I, I'm trying to find a lesser word, but I can't remember him using any other word. He did say it feels wrong for him to say it to me, but he was in awe that I was pursuing my goals of cementing my place at Castle Coombe, but trying to go elsewhere because he said, I just didn't have the drive to go and do that. And it was that he just wanted to stay here. And I always made me sort of go, is that, is that wrong of me? And he's like, go, no, it isn't. He said, it's brilliant what you're doing. But that was the humbleness of the man. But he just loved Castle Coombe and that was enough for him. Uh, one thing um, that he, he did uh, relay to me um, that from uh, a couple who uh, brought their mother-in-law with them to motor racing and they used to park on Paddock Bend and as you know when you park there you're uh, pretty steep and um, they, the husband and wife used to go off around the circuit as everybody did I think leave, leaving mother-in-law in the car and uh, the comment came back and I, I I personally take this one very much so for the, may I say, for the two of us. And uh, this, this lady said she'd love to come to Castle Coombe. She didn't know anything about the cars, but she loved to hear the two men talking about the cars. <laughs> Which, you know, if you've got that type of person, the, the comments from people like that, it, it, it's absolutely wonderful. David, um, he enjoyed uh, talking to the public. He enjoyed, as you know, talking to, about the cars and everything else. 
And never ever did I hear from him a derogatory word with regard to anybody or anything. He was uh, all the way through. He was uh, just, I think the best words are one of the greatest enthusiasts and uh, somebody who loved what he did and did what he loved. And, and would you agree uh, with this, Richard? One of the great things that we're able to, to, to judge on, I guess, is that if we, you and I would be in the, uh, you or I, because <laughs> of different, different generations, obviously, uh, in the main commentary box, he's over in Old Paddock, is that he had a way of doing the commentary, not just in a conversational way that worked, but also such a descriptive manner that whilst we couldn't see it, we could. In here, we knew what had just happened over there. Absolutely. Uh, the picture came across through the voice, and um, that, that's what you wanted. And when he handed over to me as they uh, would come up over the rise and into Bobby's, that's the corner, um, it, it was always good because I knew exactly what was happening. I mean, you know what I mean, uh, and the handover can be difficult, and um, he knew when to hand over, he knew how to hand over, and we used to just pick it, pick it up seamlessly. We didn't have a rule as to, I will pick up the commentary from that particular point. We didn't need that, because sometimes he'd stop shorter, sometimes he'd uh, carry on. Um, depending how far he was into a descriptive piece. But he would come to me and I would know not only who was in the lead, but who was moving up and what had happened in Old Paddock and everything else. And then the cars would come down into camp. I'd take over and uh, then, of course, coming out of Quarry Corner, he would pick them up. And uh, it, he always got them. It used to annoy me a bit, but uh, he, <laughs> he always got the cars in Quarry Corner because... They were side on to him. Yes. Uh, to me, I was looking up the, the exhaust pipes from the rear and uh, he got the, the positions and the who was going through on Quarry Corner so right every time, absolutely brilliant. And also those that had unfortunately gone off and uh, shall we say found a new way in the exit. Absolutely. I mean, I, I don't know whether you're going to be able to remember this. I mean, apparently the story goes is that David George was uh, was racing for uh, uh, White Horse Motor Club, uh, was a founding member of White Horse Motor Club, in fact. Uh, and somewhere along the line, he started actually commentating on some of the auto solos. And whilst David Knowlesworthy has said he's not sure exactly where it happened, but Howard Strawford, the late, great Howard Strawford, uh, heard him commentating. Uh, which I know there's similarities that we'll discuss when you get when we get you back on again, Richard, and, and talk about your uh, life and career. Um, and he invited him to his house to interview him. And then it was the very last race meet of the year, 1973, that he'd right. He'd interviewed him. He knew he had him in the back of his mind, going, "Yep, I'm happy if, if or when I need to." He's there, and he brought him in for that race meet. Do you remember anything, and apologies because you might not, in fairness, but that very last race bit of the year, this newbie suddenly thrust into your midst to, to commentate from the far side of the circuit? Well, um, I cannot remember everything about it, but um, I do know that, uh, looking at it, that we had, or I had, quite a few different people to work with. Um, it, during that particular period, and um, some were great, um, there, some were not quite so great, but they all did their best. But um, seriously, when David came on the scene and he, we finished that particular race meeting, um, I felt that um, Old Paddock was safe. It was in safe hands uh, because, seriously, I, th I remember we clicked. It worked very, very well. Over the next winter, we met a couple of times and had a few beers. And, um, well, from there on in, I may say another 40-odd years later, he, he was still there, uh, God bless him. You know, it's absolutely marvellous. And, um, yeah, it's working with, as you do these days, um, other commentators can be very nerve-wracking. But uh, working with David was never nerve-wracking because there was no artificial push to say I am the base best and uh, you know I don't know what you're doing and all that sort of thing it's just a, a great straightforward humble guy oh, absolutely marvelous 
And I think that's summed up, actually, is that I remember, um, in hindsight, thinking about it, I probably was uh, uh, turned to him this particular time, unintentionally, relatively subserviently, sort of asking him for advice and what I should do and shouldn't do. And he kind of went, he said, there's, there's not a lot I can tell you. He said, you've got to be you. Enjoy it. You are a fan. Be a fan. And and that that's kind of just stuck with me forever. But I just loved how he just would not have me being remotely subservient in any way. Oh no, no. Even uh, as yeah. a newbie, he just wouldn't have it. <laughs> no, it, and uh, I'm sure you never felt that uh, there was any anything but sheer delight that you were prepared to come and do it and do the job and uh, take on and um, uh, you took an awful lot on let's be quite fair but um, no David would uh, he, he was again I know I've said it many times but he was so easy to work with it was, it was a total pleasure I used to go to Castle Coombe with a smile on my face and uh, you know knowing that quite frankly working amongst friends no, I, 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 I totally, 100% get it. I'm just going to quickly put some of the, the, the comments up, and that does include, by the way, Alan Cooper says, nice to see Richard Davies. I'm sure he remembers the times in the early 70s when he commentated for us on the bank at Pontypool Hill Climb. Oh, yes, Pontypool, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, B-A-R-C, yes, um, absolutely wonderful. I can I can remember quite a few things. Um, there was one guy who had um, a Marcos, and he ran a pub down in um, oh what's the name of the, the cathedral down there back end, not too bad. Anyway, um, uh, he uh, was coming up and lost it on the main straight, and. Uh, the car spun off, and fortunately, the bale that was protecting a tree didn't do its job very well, and uh, the uh, car split in half with John, his feet uh, on the grass as the one half of the car went up the up the hill, and the other half of the car went down the hill. But uh, you know, Pontypool Hill climb, they were brave running that there. They really were absolutely incredible. Well, certainly uh, Alan uh, remembers that one well. Uh, I love as well, we've got two generations here. We've got one of our uh, current young saloon car superstars, potentially, in my opinion, a future champ, Matt Parr. Evening, guys. Grew up listening to David and Richard at Coombe. Uh, absolutely, I can relate. And then Papa Parr, as I call him, Chris Parr says, very touching tribute, Chris. David and Richard were a great commentary team back in the day. Their mini race commentaries were brilliant. And, and I guess that's where you knew you could just wind David up and let him go when it was mini. Oh, yes. Ab absolutely. That, uh, we used to love the mini races. And uh, I admit that my own personal favourites were the Pullman of Fords because it was such close racing. But between the two of us, I may say, uh, a little bit of wiki taking uh, is not a bad thing as long as it's done with a good spirit. And um, yes, it was done with a pretty good spirit, I must say. No, and in fairness, I have to say, because I know that the, the, the hopes that they're trying to do for the funeral is as well as trying to get one of the classic minis outside of the, uh, the, the, the crematorium where we go to the South Bristol crematorium. Uh, they're hoping to get a Formula Ford there as well because he loved those. And I'm everybody knows as well is that I, I, I adore those as well. The reality is we love anything that races because I've always said our job as the commentator is re-read the story that's written by the drivers and when the writing's that good it makes our life easy <laughs> oh absolutely i mean so the better the race the easier it is for us um, the, um commentators when there's uh, nothing happening and uh, you've only got five cars one in each corner on the whole circuit well that is when you really have to work but um, there are ways around that and uh, they would used to uh, follow in on that and uh, I'd like to think that, you know, it, it's, yes, it's the end of an era. And uh, that, that is uh, very, very unfortunate, uh, the way it's all happened. And um, I did hear that David was ill. And, um, you know, we all, when that news came through, that was pretty awful. But um, I am very proud to have known him. Yeah, and uh, and I know that we were trying, and it's one thing that, that, that 
haunts me a little bit at the minute is the fact that we were trying to do him, you, and me doing one of these Coombe TV shows, and he just wasn't well enough to do it. For those who don't know, is that he had to have an oxygen tank and everything. He really was suffering. And uh, and, and sadly, by the time uh, it was getting close to where he was prepared to do it, we ran out of time. And I, and, and, and I think it hurts you as well, Richard, because no. you... And I, and I have to say this to everybody who doesn't know this, by the way. Richard said... Because I, David, David George said, "Look, I'm not well enough. Go and do the show with Richard first, and do that." And Richard turned around and said, "No, it's all of us." And you, and and it was going to wait, and and it and it just 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 hurts a little bit, doesn't it? That 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 that, that never managed to happen, sadly. But we've had many many years to have enjoyed him, which we are, are, are doing a major point of remembering now, aren't we? Absolutely, and. Um... I mean, he worked with um, yourself and many other people at Coombe after I left. I left in, I, I, I don't know if anybody can remember, but it's 1995 when I left. And so it's, uh, it's half a lifetime away in many ways. And um, I found myself um, in, in living in Spain and occasionally back in Germany. And uh, which is where, if you like, uh, my sort of adopted family uh, come from. And I've been very unlucky on that side of things. But um, I've kept in touch with, um, uh, obviously, uh, with uh, Tony Allen and Jill. And uh, he's been the main source of, of my in information, to be quite fair. And um, I, I'm sorry I didn't get to see him in recent recent years. I mean, so you heard about him and uh, kept the news coming. But, um, you know, and eventually uh, when I heard that he was really, really ill, I mean, so that, that was horrible. It re really was. We say here is a man that a hard driver, seriously, on the road, very, very quick. Um, but... I don't know if you know or remember, but he had a terrible motorcycle accident many, many years ago when, in fact, he uh, he decided that his motorbike would go through the gap between on a narrow bridge between uh, a Renault 5, I think it was, uh, and the parapet of the bridge. Unfortunately, that that won and he was in hospital and in intensive care for quite a long time. But being David, he uh, sorted himself out, uh, thanks to the medics and everybody else. And as uh, soon as he could, where was he? Paddock Bend, talking to all the people, as if nothing had happened. I mean, so, you know, and, and he had a life-threatening accident. And um, as I say, he came through it all and uh, picked off where he left off. And uh, I was so delighted to see him back because uh, it was like... Um, well, you know, part of me was missing when he wasn't there. Yeah, no, I, I can get that. Well, just quickly then to, to whittle this, uh, Nigel Forrest says, it's great that the circuit comms involve the crowd as well as getting updates from parts of the circuit out of sight, agreed. Uh, Rich and I have talked about that, met, spoken about that many times. Steve George says he ended up on top of the wall uh, at the pub on the A38 at Lulzate <laughs> once, apparently. <laughs> Yeah. Singapore, yeah. Uh, Emma Strawford says Richard beat me to it. David was coomed through and through. So when you said cut him in like a, a stick of rock, cut him in half, and he was coomed through and through, a hundred percent. Paul Wiltshire, a lovely comment. Uh, call him the Murray Walker of Castle Coombe without the gaffs. Absolutely. Don't go into it, Richard, because I know we touched on Murray Walker that you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Love this one as well. Uh, Kate George. Hi, Kate. Um, lovely to hear about Dad and such lovely tributes to him. Many good memories of lap scoring for him at Coombe and having to prove my stuff at racing school in front of him. Wow, that would have been hard. Uh, no pressure. Well, welcome to, to you, Kate, as well. And, and Kate and Steve, I, I really hope that... Um, we, we've done him a degree of justice uh, to, to, to remember him and... and Richard and I spoke about this earlier. We wanted to try and celebrate his life. And I know that I got emotional and the tribute was emotional, but it's a life worth celebrating, Richard, at the end of the day. Oh, my God, yes. And, um, you know, it's... Seriously, I don't think we can say enough, um, but um, you get emotional, I'm getting emotional about it. And um, 
it's a great shame there's uh, so many people that you know and love and uh, life is very short we only spend as the saying goes we only spend a short time here and um, too much time doing whatever we're doing um, later on god knows about that side of things but if there's a racing circuit anywhere up there um, i'm quite sure david will be doing his thing uh, uh, thank you, Steve. Says absolutely, you've done it proud. I appreciate that. That that means a lot. It's always uh, uh, scary to to know whether you get the, the the line right in reality. And I agree. I mean, and, and I've got to say, uh, uh, Richard, is that, and I know sadly one or two you weren't aware of that I informed you that that we've lost uh, in the not so uh, so distant past. It's getting a very entertaining place up there for for motor race, and there's some pretty big names that are there. It's it's sad um remember the 2nd of march that um uh, everybody is welcome to south bristol crematorium 3 p.m on uh, uh wednesday the 2nd of march uh please do come along let's show our respects to to an incredible man that, that have bought so many memories and along with richard got so many people hooked on the sport hooked on the circuit all and for me hooked on commentating as well very very special richard i cannot thank you enough you've joined us from spain to, to 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 bring these memories and i can't thank you enough for doing it and the fact that you've agreed you will come on again where we actually get i get to uh, to pick your brains about your life and experiences as well at some point oh that won't take long <laughs> <laughs> that's not true we know there's lots of stories there. there's loads of stories but thank you so much for coming on richard i appreciate it Chris, an absolute pleasure, and uh, thanks to everybody, and thank you for the comments, uh, particularly from uh, uh, David's two kids. They're not kids anymore, let's face it. <laughs> but, um, I well remember, if I might, one little thing. Um, Steve from um, Merlin Motorsport was uh, with David and uh, myself, and his daughter Kate was there, and uh, Kate she'll hate me for this she turned around and she said oh i would love to be a racing driver and steve came out with a, quite a well-known saying but it fitted so well he said can i tell you how to make a small fortune out of motor racing yes says kate he said start with a large one <laughs> <laughs> David liked that as much as anybody, and uh, I'm sure Kate will probably remember. It's so true as well. Right, Richard. Thank, thank you for what you've done, and um, very professionally, as always, and everything. And I really enjoyed being given the opportunity to say a few things about David. No, thank you very much. It was so special, last minute, uh, uh, and I appreciate it. So, until we get you on for your uh, for a show in your own right, uh, stay well, Richard, and uh, we'll speak to you again very soon. Look forward to it. Cheers. Bye bye, everybody. Thanks, Richard. Right. That uh, gives us that. Now, before we start the next bit, I just need to uh, shake the emotion off and we're going to bring Steve Weston on and we're going to talk about the 2022 season, which I know David George will want. He, as we've said, cut him in half. He is Castle Coombe through and through. We get to go again. This time, hopefully we'll get through the whole year without any restrictions whatsoever. I'll be back in a minute. Thank you. 
So, some very, very fond memories of uh, David George. As I say, don't forget the uh, the link that we put in is that uh, Wednesday, the 2nd of March, uh, that will be there. And look, great to see uh, as well. Tim Perry says, thank you, Richard. Lovely to hear your stories. I totally agree. And we're going to be getting Richard on uh, in due course. Paul Wiltshire, thanks, Richard. Um, Kate George, oh, this means a lot. Uh, as Steve said, you've done him proud. Thank you. Thank you very much. As you can imagine, it was. Uh, it's always difficult to know how to do it. Emma Strawford, well done, Chris. I can hear the applause in the VIP lounge. Well, wow, don't say that. Crikey. <laughs> You'll get me going again. Right. Let's look forward to the 2022 season. Uh, and I'm delighted to, to bring in uh, the competitions director, Steve Weston. Hello, mate. How are you? Hello. I'm good. Very well. Yeah, I know you were in the background there uh, watching quite uh, a, an emotional uh, opening to this show. Yeah. I mean, how do you follow that? you know <laughs> you've got to sorry mate <laughs> yeah. but um, you know just very quickly before we move on is that uh you know for yourself it, it, you know as well as i do is a voice synonymous to to the circuit and and the racing club yeah absolutely and you know everybody who's watching this will know know have their own stories won't they so you could probably could have probably run this this program for hours just getting several people on in the comments and stuff to to you know give you anecdotes about about david so yeah what more could be said, really? No, absolutely. Well, you know, as I say, is that uh, I, I still think it's a very good way to go on is that to look forward to the 2022 season, because as, as, as Richard was saying, he's such a huge fan of the racing and, and, and everything else, is that it's not just the show must go on, is that he wants it. Um, uh, oh, by the way, I know Richard's still in the in the in the background. Is that Kate George has just said, "I remember that, Richard. Lovely to see you." So there you go. She did remember that about how to make a fortune, uh, a small fortune from motor racing. That's brilliant. Uh, Tim Perry says, uh, "Evening, Mister Weston." Hey, Good evening. Formal, Even Perry, I don't call yeah. that anymore, do I? No, not many people do, mate. Not at all. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Bank manager, maybe. Yeah, well, they they worry when you come in, don't they? Nowadays, but I don't go in there if I can help it. There's no yeah, money. Exactly. In there. <laughs> um, you've been a busy boy during the winter season to uh, to to really pep up this uh, this season, and and it's looking like a busy year ahead. It certainly is, and obviously David would be happy because we've got plenty of minis coming as well. So obviously the tie up with the uh, the mighty minis, which hopefully people have heard about. So we're running running that as a championship for the club. So. That's been taking up a lot of my time during the winter. Well, since Christmas, really, when I had an off-the-cuff conversation with Roger Tello about, um, you know, Mighty Minis coming to Coombe um, and things. It's, moved a, it's almost that. perfect time to some extent now, I think, about it, isn't it? We're, it's poignant. Absolutely, yeah. And, I mean, they're coming, the Mighty Minis are coming in May and again at the end of the year um, for the finals day. And then we've got the, the Mini 7s and Amelia's at the, the summer weekend so three three lots of mini racing what did you not like about that really well exactly david george's passion lives on at the circuit that's uh, absolutely right i've always loved it i mean my biggest one just to uh, i know it makes people chuckle because they know exactly what i'm talking about as they go around the corner they look like they're a dog cocking their leg to have a wee because that one corner of wheel just pops up and bounces and even as a five-year-old sat at quarry corner i remember that with those minis like a dog having a wee but yeah. they're just brilliant entertainment and and as you say we've got them at the beginning at the end and the future plans is that it could even that we're growing the the stable to be able to to sort of in in, in like next year or whatever be able to have an away round where we go in unison to another circuit as well yeah we're in that position now hopefully we've, we've taken on the minis uh mighty mini championship and also the gt sports car cup are under our umbrella if you want to call it a different word so there they come obviously every year to the um to the autumn classic and they've the, you know we we've got together with them and they wanted us to to run their series they or run their series they run it themselves flavian and vanessa are very good at doing that yeah. so we're just the, the you know the name over the door for want of a better word um but they're launching this new group one touring car series which will be launched at coom um at the autumn classic and then that will grow hopefully so obviously with um 
you know, the, the three championships, the hot hatch series, the mighty minis, GT sports car cup, that's at least a day at another circuit, um, whereby we could, you know, we can run championship rounds, hopefully. So hire a circuit somewhere else. And uh, there's always circuits that people would want to go to. We would be looking at hopefully one of the, the larger ones, Donington, Silverstone, Brands, somewhere like that. Oh, Aim oh, high, why oh, not? Yeah. Oh, and, um, seems to be getting mentioned as quite a popular one to try as well, and I do recommend it. Yeah, I was, we've got I mean, an Alton Park regular in uh, in Nigel watching as well, and it would be awesome to watch them around there. Yeah, and I think you know we we did it once with the Saloons to Donington Park, and probably you know half the guys had never been anywhere else; they've always just raced at Coombe. So to take everybody somewhere else and run our own race day um, with the infrastructure we've got in place now, I don't th- I don't think it's impossible. Well, um, don't forget also Brands Hatch as well; they did, didn't they? They did, yeah, yeah. So you know, we we can do it. Hopefully, if if all the all the ducks align, so um, something to look forward to. And it is growing. Hopefully, the club's growing. You know, leaps and bounds at the moment, which is has options. been the ambition. Yeah, absolutely. Options, that's yeah. the point, isn't it, Steve? Well, we had a three-year plan um, and a five-year plan, um, and we're in our third year, just going into our third year. And obviously, COVID, as it does with with everything else, has put a bit of a dampener on things, but. Um, coming out of that, as we hopefully are now, um, it seemed like a great time and the opportunities come along for us to do these things. And, and you know, if it works, great. Hopefully it will bring some more money into the club as well, which is, is always good because um, we're a non-profit making. So we can just invest that back into the club and, and keep growing, which is hopefully what everybody wants to do. No, absolutely. Um so let's let's look at the uh, at the year ahead. Sadly, uh, Richard uh, Beard. We were hoping to have Richard on, but he's just he's not feeling very well at the minute. Get well soon, mate. Um, I'm guessing. Have is there more Marshall days left to come yet? Do you know? Um, we've got the Marshall training days. Yeah. Um, so the Saturday one, which is an invite only. So those that have been invited should know about that. And then the main the main days on um, March the sixth, Sunday, March the sixth. So that'll be that'll be all the experienced marshals, the new new marshals, um, anybody. So anybody that wants to get involved in that, who hasn't been before, can look on the website and look up Marshall in and Richard's contact details are on there. So um, that will be the, the for most people that's the start of the season. Basically, they all get together, yeah, dust off the overalls, try and make and, them stretch a bit. And, and uh, I think we had quite a few people saying that. Apologies, guys. I know that there was messages in the early start of the the, the uh, early stages of this show. Um, but I'm sure you appreciate that by the time I was sort of like into the the emotional uh, uh, tributes and what have you that, that I didn't bring that up. Uh, we have already though got now Thomas Parker says looking forward to that. Uh, exactly as you say, it's the starter pistol for the uh, mighty Orange Army uh, for for sure. Um, are this year are we back to the situation where um, taster days are back on? Or are we still not quite there yet? Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, I mean most. As far as Motorsport UK are concerned, we're back to normal-ish. Um, there's a few things that have changed during COVID, which we won't go back, hopefully. So sign-on will be electronic, hopefully. Um, scrutineering, we'll let people know about that one because that's a, a work in progress um, with Motorsport UK because there is a trial going on and hopefully Coombe will be part of that trial. Um, so there's a lot going on behind the scenes at the moment um, with Motorsport UK and, and scrutineering. Um but yeah, you know, that's, that's like you say, COVID has brought some good things to the race day, but we should be back to normal on a race day. Um, so yeah, t- taster days and, you know, actually face to face, bit like training day, which we did a Zoom, a Zoom event last year. Um, <laughs> yeah, of course. You know, trying to do firefighting over Zoom is a bit difficult, but um, yeah, you know, to get back to normal, to actually get people together and it, actually face to face, you know, probably. We've, we've worked at a timetable, but we probably may as well stop for the first ha- hour, two hours, because they'll all be just chatting to each other because they haven't seen each other for so long. And, you know, they'll, it's, that's a normal training day. That's what a lot of people come for, but they do have to do some training as well. But. Well, and, and, and the race days, you know, we've always said is, is, is the, the Mighty Orange Army is one big family that we couldn't do what we love without, and they're absolute heroes, so it's great. That's why I, I, I was interested in the question, is it's a big deal that we can have the taste of days going again? Uh, and equally, uh, forgive me, um, I'm probably going to word this wrong, but there was uh, people not able to get signatures as such that could move them up through the order and hopefully yeah, that for the up- upgrading, Yeah, and the, the upgrade through the 
the system from you know well, what used to be called trainee but is now a, a marshal and then to experience marshal and so on and so forth yeah we i'm not sure we'll go back to cards per se which was what they used to do just get a signature on a card um because obviously most of these things we try and do electronically now um yeah. and I, I must be honest i don't know um what situation we're at as far as that's concerned but we're we will get back to those you know those days where we can recognize people's achievements and and help them get up through the ladder um to the giddy heights of uh you know clark of course and people like that no one wants that mate <laughs> i'm only joking i'm joking uh alan cooper says uh good evening guys can steve tell us if we are going to continue with paperless reporting to race control uh yes probably because it works better for us but there will be i think we'll there'll be a sort of hybrid thing i believe um you know all this will be explained on training day because richard and i are working hard behind the scenes to get things in place for training day so so that we can tell because a lot of it's up in the air um you know again going back to the scrutineering thing it motorsport uk are, are not the quickest at dishing out information generally at this time of year um but you know there, there's lots of plans going on um and we're, we we always try and get things ready for for the marshals training day so that we can tell them at marshals training day what is going to happen during the season so we will probably some of the, a lot of the stuff electronically works a lot better and is a lot quicker for us in race control, to be honest. So, you know, you get an incident out on circuit, we get a, a message from, from the post and we can act on it. Whereas normally you've got to wait for the course car to drive around, pick up a piece of paper, bring it back. Somebody's got to read it and act upon it. So it does work a lot better for us if, if we can do the paperless stuff, because it's a lot quicker. Absolutely. And obviously you then, you know, if they're sending us an email, we've then got an electronic paper trail which is the wrong word but you know it, it works a lot better for us without paper the paperless trail so, I, I, and i do i think across the board wherever uh, um I'm, I'm commentating is that there is a whole load of things that have changed for the better yeah definitely genuinely yeah, uh, or, yeah. or, or uh, even if to some people it might not necessarily be the better it's for the better good yeah, well, definitely. Greater, and it, greater good, as they it's say. It's the same with the, um, you know, the, the the online rev up system that we use for for drivers and and also the marshals as well. Um, there's a lot of info that's been upgraded uh, upgraded this week for the drivers um, to enter some more information on, so they can now upload their license so we can see it on the rev up system. So I can go into the office and and go onto rev up and check if somebody's got a current license. So that's all done via rev up um and there you know there's some people that don't use rev up and there's some that will ne never never <laughs> never will um but you know from our point of view if it's there electronically then we can we can access it on race days and stuff like that so it's just a lot easier all around same with sign on you know back in the day when they all used to queue up and come and sign on and then give them a slip of paper and then go to scrutineering and queue up again and you know all these things are a lot smoother now because we can check most of it before race day so if it's done electronically you know on the week run up to the the race meeting on the week before we can check all this information we don't need to to do it on the day so it just makes life easier for everybody really of course we found out on the last coom tv that they need that they're, they're insistent that the, the chocolate bars reintroduced again now absolutely yeah i'm not <laughs> sure how that's going to work because they don't come to sign on anymore so yeah, we'll definitely have to sort something out, I'm sure. Yeah, Kat was determined, wasn't she? Bless her. Uh, yeah. Emma Strawford asked the question, will I have my lodgers this year, Steve, in the in the media centre? Uh, I can't possibly comment on that, Emma, because there's <laughs> <laughs> politics in the background on that one, I'm afraid. Yeah, <laughs> I can imagine Emma's chuckling at that one, to be honest, as well. Uh, just quickly going back to the minis comment, Lewis Bird, uh, one of our racers, says, minis four wide up the rise with David and Richard commentating when I was in my teens. Brilliant. 100% yeah. I'm there, mate. That's one of my abided memories as well. Only four wide? That must have been a quiet day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Very, very quiet. But no, I, I definitely remember that one. Um, okay, so that, I think, covers uh, the Marshall side. 25th of march the 26th 6th of march is it sorry sorry yeah. saturday the 26th of march yeah. um the media and test day uh, uh track day track day sorry yeah, and this is some 
<laughs> sorry, mate, sorry, mate, sorry. This is a stumbling um, block. Yeah, which I know isn't easy because of uh, uh, noise levels and everything uh, that, 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 you know, we've... It's the only it's the only reason, Chris, to be honest. I mean, Graham Graham at the circuit, the circuit MD has, has been kind enough to, to allow us to run at the circuit without any cost. Um so you know we're we're charging guys for the day, but that money is paying for the you know, the, the track tie the um awards in the evening and you know, which isn't cheap. Um so you know, that that event will be cost neutral. So you know, he's given us the circuit. We haven't had to actually physically hire it, although there's things to be paid for. So, you know, food, drink, blah, 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 blah. Um, but as a circuit, we can only run X amount of 108 days in a 12 month period. Absolutely. And that is the test days before a race event. It's the race events themselves. It's the bike weekend and the, the days before that. And the, obviously the bike testing. And, you know, so we're limited to the 108 days we can run. And Graham's been kind enough to give us a circuit, but we can't run that as a 108 day. And most of the 108 days, apart from race days, are six car days. So if we did run it, we could run it as a 108 day, but we could only run 24 cars. So right. it's, you know, it's, it's swings and roundabouts. We need to try and get as many of our guys that can come. It was the, the initial idea was to get them to come and just do a shakedown. And obviously, as soon as you offer somebody a, a track day, for 195 pound and we're going to jump at it so you know the guys that can get below 100 are fine if you can't get below 100 unfortunately without you know silence in the car you're not going to get on circuit and we would love to run a massive test day that everybody could go to at 108 but with the noise nuisance that uh, uh, thing that we've got we just can't do that many noisy days um you know i think y you are and probably most people watching this would would love it if we could run 108 every day um you know <laughs> yeah, absolutely it, it's just not possible so we need to pick and choose when we can run a 108 day and unfortunately that day isn't one of them because we will want to run some noisier days later in the year so pre pre-race testing etc so you know if, if we don't if we ran that as a 108 day later in the year something else would have to suffer and then we don't get a build up into their race meet where they'll they'll yeah. actually want to run it. And and you know, don't forget if if you can't necessarily get out on track, is that uh, we've got scrutineers there. So if there's anything that you want to sort of show them on the car, float past them. Am I right in saying this, Steve? Yeah, there there will be a scrutineer, at least one scrutineer there all day. Um, so and, even if even if you just want to to bring the car down, media are going to be there. So there's there's photo opportunities. Uh, yeah. There are scrutinists to have a look at something if you want to speak about it, show them something, and then the, then there's the awards in the evening. It's not just the awards. I'm hopeful. I don't know whether we've had this confirmed, but the the, the plan is to have entertainment and food, and uh, the the, the, uh, yeah, the bar uh, will be open. Yeah. So the plans are, are pretty well progressed. Cats well on top of that. Um, so the food, you know, during the day, if you come during the day, hopefully in the morning you get a coffee and a bacon buddy and then you'd have to buy your own lunch, but then we're going into a buffet for the evening. Um, you know, so that's part of, you know, what's going on. Um, you're hopefully going to be there by seven ish. I hope so, mate. That's the plan. Yeah. <laughs> Do the evening. Um, and yeah, we, we, well, I thought you were sorting out the entertainment, but obviously we need to chat about that a bit later on. Um, well, I'll, so, I'll, if you know, play, I'm too sexy for my shirt. I'll go for it, mate. You know yeah. I mean? oh, not again. Um, <laughs> But yeah, the, the finer details are to be sorted out. But yeah, that's the plan. Um, and we, I'm not sure if Cat's put out the timetable yet for the evening. Um, but the we'll be based in the Strawford Centre, so it'll be you know downstairs. The garage will be available. Um, the food will be in the Cafe Bar H, I believe, and the bar will be open. But you'll have to buy your own drinks. Um, and then um, we have arranged with the college to get the sim in the K Thomas Centre. Oh wow! Um, so people I can come. That. Yeah, that's that. Um, I, I'm hopefully, I could. I like to say that. Um, but yeah, they, they, and you can race Coom on that sim. So probably what I've we'll do seen is we'll that a, David yeah. Campion was doing that on social yeah. media. Was racing so Coom, it, wasn't he? It's based. It, it's it's um it's based in a Caterham uh, type car uh, with a big screen, and we'll probably have a little trophy on the fastest lap on the day. Right. So it will hopefully be there all day. Um, and I'm not sure if they're asking for a donation, you know, a, a small I donation or whatever. I think that's um, we'll confirm that anyway, but they have, you know, they've said they're going to bring it along. We'll put it in the K Thomas Centre just in case it rains. 
um, and we'll just have the, the you know the challenge on the day so you can get the quickest lap around Coombe. So that should be a bit of fun, and that'll go into the evening. So obviously, who knows what's going to happen then? But um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they'll yeah. Hopefully... They might they might bottle out of leaving it out come the evening because <laughs> the point being is that they can stay in their caravans, motorhomes, whatever. Yeah, in so we paddock as well overnight. If, yeah, so we've arranged again. Speaking of Graham, he's going to arrange for the the shower block to be there. So if people are there all day, they can go and have a quick shower and get changed, and then it's sort of you know smart casually in the evening. It's not a black tie do. Unfortunately, that's later in the year. Um, but yeah, so then we'll we'll invite everybody from each group upstairs for the, the awards. So you know, Formula Fords all upstairs, do your bit, and we're trying to arrange. Um, hopefully, with Kevin from Bristol Sound to stream that into the downstairs and into the cafe on TVs. So if you're not actually involved, you'll still be able to see it. So you know, it, yeah, high tech, isn't it? If it works, it'd be great. Mate. <laughs> but um yeah so it, you know <laughs> that's the plan in our heads and hopefully it'll come off so yeah i mean hopefully this will encourage a few more people to try and attend because it it's not what we wanted to do um and it's not what you know we planned to do obviously last year but the the big one will be at the end of the year at the concord thing in november um but this was just to to acknowledge the fact that the guys you know have run a championship paid us money all year same with the, the hot hatch guys in the series, you know, they've all paid a lot of money to be there. So they deserve to be crowned champion with a bit of a fanfare. So, you know, that's what it, it's all about. The whole day is based around, you know, us appreciating the fact that these guys do pay us a lot of money, Angros, sorry, um, do pay us a lot of money uh, to come racing. And it, it, you know, it's, it's some payback for that. So. And to acknowledge, you know, we, we are a family, we're a group, and the fact that we get to come together uh, and, uh, uh, and and sort of enjoy celebrating all of that together for that day and the uh, the evening or the night or whatever um, is, is just a great opportunity. And that includes, by the way, one of the things that I know is coming up is that for some people that they've got cars that they're looking to um, uh, possibly rent out uh, to to people for the season, you know, arrive and drives or, or, or run yeah. the car or even sell it, heaven forbid. But but all of that is that you can get potential customers to come down and actually yeah. have a go in the car. Absolutely. Yeah. Anybody that's um, we're, we're trying, hopefully the people that are registered for the championships in the series will get priority oh, because they're, they're the ones they're the ones we know that are coming, coming with us. Um, but yeah, if, if as long as they've got Sorry, a race but, license. Steve, can you start that again, mate? Because I lost you a bit at the beginning there. All right. So, yeah, anybody that's got a race license um, can come because they'll have to, obviously, they're all going to be out on track at the same time. So, we don't want just Joe Public turning up and driving around in a Ford Fiesta. So, um, you know, it, it would need to be uh, somebody that's got a race license. But if somebody's trying to rent a car or sell a car, then, yeah, by all means, they, they'll need to sign on and, and do everything that everybody else needs to do. Um, but most of the guys are, are allowed, though, aren't they? They are, but they'll need to be signed on as well because it's a track day. It's not a test day, so you know that that's one of the advantages. It, it's a, there's um, I'm trying to think. I, I can't remember off the top of my head. There's there's somebody um, who's racing in the Mighty Minis, I believe, whose dad is an artist instructor and wants to come down and give them some instructions. So they're coming down together. So you know, yeah, you can have a passenger, and we will be taking media around. So it'd be opportunity to get some media pictures and you know stuff like that. And if you know, if people want to bring sponsors down and just show them what it's all about and what Coombe's all about, it's not a problem. Um, so yeah, as long as the drivers will all have to be signed on and and have a race license, so that we know that they are capable of going out on track with everybody else that's got a race license, basically. Which is fine because at the end of the day, if they're thinking about renting out the uh, uh, their race car or or, or or selling their race car, then the likelihood is by this point they've probably already got a racing license. So that's absolutely yeah, fine. That absolutely, means that everybody's yeah. going out. Oh, oh, I went then, didn't I? You did. Uh, they're, they're all under control. I tell you what, I'm going to uh, plug my my cable in because I thought it was you. It might be me that's uh, that's having an issue. Um, Yes, so, uh, so they've got a racing license, protecting the people that are out there. They're going to have a racing license if they're looking at renting uh, or, or paying for a drive or buying a race car, or whatever. It's just a great opportunity. Plus, we've got media there that will be 
taking photos, speaking to people, everything like that. So it's about exposure of what everybody's doing as much as possible as well. It, it and I have to compliment you, Steve. This was uh, this was your brainchild. It's something that I think that that used to be done some years ago, and you were keen to try and get this going again. Yeah, we've done it way back when. I'm trying to think. Somebody mentioned this the other day. I was trying to think when we did the last open day track day stuff. But it's just that, you know, what we're trying to do um, with the social media that Kat's doing more now, um, you know, the, the website, Facebook, Twitter, blah, 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 all the other stuff. And, you know, the, the, the written press is just trying to get in people's faces a bit more to say, you know, we are there. We're not just this little, you know, background sort of club. We're, we're hopefully going places. So it's just an opportunity to invite all the written media down and hopefully get a few words in in the written press as well as all the social that goes with it really so um yeah it's, it's just an opportunity it was it was originally just a you know move it as a shakedown really so that people could come and, and shake the car down um and they will go out and test we know they will but um yeah it's more of an opportunity just before the season starts to you know to come and make sure that the, you know the wheels go around some some people obviously won't be ready um and we know that because some people will be sorting their car out on the 17th of April before the 18th of April race day. So, you know, some will have the car ready. Um, and, you know, you and I both see on, on, you know, all the social media cars in build and bits and pieces, you know, for sale or stripped down or, you know, yep. workshops for the <laughs> shell. They've only um, had all winter though. But absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But they will all be doing it on the Saturday and Sunday before the 18th of April. So, will, you know, if, you know, some, some things never will, change. Some things never change. Not. But Including... it was just an opportunity. Including the current Mrs. Dawes just bought me a top up that never changes either. Yeah. Mate. You get looked after too well, don't you? I know. She just hopes that by the end of a show, I'm like sozzled enough that I just go asleep. That's what she hopes <laughs> for. Um, uh, but, but yeah, so it, you know, it, Kieran it, it, says, "What's wrong with the Ford Fiesta?" Nothing, <laughs> mate. We're just yeah. using it as an example. <laughs> yeah, some people are so touchy. Yeah. <laughs> a road going Ford Fiesta, then should I have said? It, it, exactly, so, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's 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 different. It's a fun day. The and 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 I love the fact, by the way, Steve, as I know that we've had some people uh, in the comment is. Uh, that uh, they are coming for just the evening. And it's like, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's just, you know, we we fully appreciate some people come a long way. Um, mm. You know, I know Kat sent out to everybody that is entitled to an award, um, a, a personal invite. And I saw one of the replies that was somebody who said, wow, I wasn't expecting an award for anything. So they obviously didn't know, <laughs> haven't looked at the, you know, the points <laughs> or whatever. Um, but they're three hours away. Well, it's a long way to come down three hours on a Saturday just to, you know, there's a trophy. Thanks very much. <laughs> we'll see you later in the season. So we fully appreciate that. Um, but it, it's an opportunity for people if they are local or want, you know, a night out. Um, the, only, the only downside is, is, you know, you can't stay on site. I know when we usually do our awards, we're in a hotel. So you can have a good fun evening and, you know, have a dance around and then just walk upstairs or get the lift and or downstairs at a future ins and, and crush out. So, you know, that's, that's a disadvantage. But like you said, I think we're quite happy for people to stay on site with, um, you know, camper vans and stuff tents, like that. Yeah, you know, bearing in mind it is still March. So, you know, it's fine. It's fine, mate. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Especially once you've had a couple to drink, it's all fine. It's no <laughs> problem. Uh, Tim Perry says, where is my Mrs. Dawes, mate? I, so it's taken me this long, so don't don't say yeah, that. Have to find his own. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Fennell, uh, lovely tribute to David. He's one of the good guys. Always had time for a chat and always had a smile. He will be missed. And of course, unless I'm very much mistaken, that was you that was referenced in the the little bit of uh, of commentary I managed to source of Dave as well, which uh, I hope was okay to put in. I know that it was possibly a bit raw to put his voice, but how can you not? Uh, ooh. Wayne Paul says, I'm pleased to say I have three Formula Fords already now. First time ever, mate. Pleased to hear that, waiter. Good He's to hear. He's going to need a bigger one, then. He is. Well, he just always nicks that garage anyway. He, he does, yeah. Right. We're going to have to start charging him more then if he's going to get more cars in there. Absolutely. I'll, I'll make a note of that when I'm on. Great to see it, Miss Paul. I, I just still love it in the fact that we've got um, numerous people that. Uh, 
I grew up watching racing and now running teams at Coombe. I just adore it. I just love it, including Wayne Paul, obviously. Chris Mason, uh, uh, our paramedic, our medical dude. Uh, good evening, all. And uh, just to show that they do bounce back and forth. Tim Perry says, good evening, Mr. Mason. Hope you're well. Stop chatting with each other. Focus. Focus <laughs> on the show. Yeah. Um, so that's that's the media day. Anything else that we need to cover on that day? I don't think so. There's a lot that we'll try and keep people informed. Just keep an eye on social and, you know, the website and stuff like that. We're trying to update the website at the moment. Um, but again, I'm, I'm waiting for the regs to come back from get approved by Motorsport UK um, before we sort of go big time on the website and try and bring it up to 2022 because most of the information on there at the moment is 2021. <laughs> but um, yeah, we, we're working behind the scenes to try and get that done. Um, with Anthony Weeks um, and his company to just try and, you know, again, uh, upgrade that um, with all the information, but try not to just blow everything out of the water and just trash it, just try and make it look a bit more um, modern and stuff. And obviously with links to Mighty Minis and GT Sports Car Cup and all that sort of stuff and try and evolve to, to give it the, the sort of club thing um because we're, we're conscious we don't want to forget the guys that have been there forever um but you know it's a new era for everybody so we need to just try and big ourselves up which hopefully we're doing absolutely no i love it okay race days first one uh howard's race day monday 18th of april easter monday yeah so we made a decision and last year probably before that that we would start the season with double headers for all our guys um you know again they do they do spend a lot of money with us um over the year and some people like double headers some don't but it was an opportunity to to sort of say right you know this is a day where you can come and have two races at the start of the season because we know as the season goes on for various different reasons many different reasons people do sort of drift away or whatever so it's just an opportunity to start a season with two races just get out there and, and you know this is it we're making a start um, and we're joined by the 750 Motor Club Sports Specials and the bcv 8s as well. So it's a it's a double header day all the way through. And I don't think um, Sports Specials haven't been for a while. I know bcv 8s missed a year or two. So there's a lot of stuff coming back this year that we haven't had. Um, and we'll talk about that shortly. But um, yeah, it, it was just a, a, a real quick fire double header for everybody. And again, you know, I think on the timetable at the moment lunch is about 11 o'clock but who cares let's just get loads of races done you know 12 races in a day um back to what Kasukum does best really which is races and put on entertainment for everybody so um that was the the idea was to like i say to get get the home championship series and stuff up and running um with a bit of a bang really I do love that. The BCV8s is something I've covered quite a few times, and that is special around there. But to, to really do the starter pistol for our home championships, that is wicked. So 18th of April, Easter Monday, uh, the the Howard's Day, the the, the way this, the year's got to start, it always has. It's always special. Uh, busy weekend for that one for me. I'm at Donington Park Friday and Saturday doing the, the Masters. Day off on Sunday to eat Easter chocolate. And then to come and work it off with the full day you're putting on for us on the Monday, by the sounds of it. Yeah, you're not not working hard enough if we're having the Sunday off, are you? That's true. That's true, mate. Yeah, we'll I think that's because the current Mrs. Door scares me now. You see, is that I got to try mm. and spend some time with her as well, do all the DIY or whatever. But yeah, yeah. Uh, second yeah, of <laughs> swearing at people now. Yeah, exactly. Second uh, of May, uh, May Day Madness. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah, these taglines are difficult to think up sometimes. I think a lot of these have been recycled from the year before so uh, and, the year, and the year before that. Um, but yeah, it's just, I mean, that's again, that's a busy day um, with with the home championships in the series. And we're joined, that would be the first outing for the Mighty Minis as a Castle Coombe um, yeah, championship. So it's double header for them on that day. Um, the MG, MG Owners Club are coming and Track Attack Racing Club. So Again, a busy day. Only only eleven races that day, unfortunately. But thanks, mate. Yeah, you know, it is what it is. Some of the timetables are a bit more snug than others, and all the marshals now will be laughing because they know what we mean by a snug timetable. <laughs> and um, John Ford, bless him, and his recovery crew will be cringing. But hey ho, John, keep up the good work. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, it, we're trying to, obviously, we've always been known for good racing, lots of racing. So we could, <laughs> Ken, bless him, our chairman will be saying, cram some more races in. But, you know, we could, there are, most of my timetables do finish relatively early, funny enough, because um, we can run to half six. But most of the timetabled stuff at the moment finishes at six o'clock. But as we all know, You've if it doesn't go that. well, yeah. yeah. Yeah, with 12 yeah. races 11 races blah 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 something's going to happen um so we need to put a bit of wriggle room in and you know john like I say the recovery guys and uh the rescue crew and, and les and his team you know they work really really hard on every race day um and we rarely rarely lose a race so you know. well the race drivers will keep rearranging the circuit furniture at the end of the day so well yeah i mean slow down <laughs> <laughs> Tim Perry, one of the Orange Army, says, "Ha ha! Don't we just? He knows exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. I like it as well. Mike Cotton, ref when I refer to DIY, he says, "What drive it yourself? If only, <laughs> mate. If only." As Murray Walker said, "Those that can do it, those that can't talk about it." There we go. I haven't raced, sadly, but uh, uh, read into that what you will. Uh, okay, so that's the uh, Mayday Madness. Then we've got uh, Saturday, the 11th of June, the Summer Spectacular Race. Uh, well, that's 11th and tw actually, we need to update the website because it just says 11th, but that's presumably 11th and 12th. I think we've had this issue before with the website where you can only actually put one day on it. Oh, really? I mean, yeah. So it is, it is a weekend event, two days. But the, when you on the if you look at the website on the calendar, it just comes up the 11th of June. And I think... We've had an issue with that before where we tried to I'm do looking it at the things. circuit website, so I can't tell you what it says on the CCRC uh, website. Okay. Fair, yeah, anyway, moving on. It's We'll look at it, but I'm sure there is. we've had this issue before. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's quite quiet that weekend. We've only got, uh, looks like, 20-odd, 20 27 races. So that's quite a quiet <laughs> I'm not weekend. with you for that one, actually. I'm, Are you uh, not? No, I'm doing the American Speed Fest. That's one of those ones that was a bit awkward, wasn't it? Because I know we've got yeah. like... Um, I think every circuit in the country is running. Yeah, every... It, it is. And, and that's the thing. Every, there's people suddenly going, oh, Le Mans 24 hours on that weekend. And I know there's a few people that, that, that scamper over to France for that one. Um, but it's the interesting one. That going, Actually, there's loads on. I think it's the MG special weekend at silverstone that weekend uh, i'm yeah. doing american speed fest with the uh, euro nascar at, at brands hatch that weekend yeah it's, it's a just a big weekend of motor racing in general Bruxton, isn't it Bruxton's running as well for yeah. a weekend event so yeah. yeah it is i mean the, unfortunately i know as soon as we put the calendar out there's always comments about oh why are you running on that weekend it's busy um we get given the dates by the circuit because they've got so much else going on that they need to fit around it so you but know, it shows if everybody else has got events going everywhere, it's just a popular weekend for going motor racing. It, hopefully, that. yeah. Yeah. I mean, pick and choose where you go. Obviously, Chris, if you're not coming to Coombe, then you're going to miss a good event because, oh, again, yeah. we've got Mini Millias on that, that weekend. So they're racing both days. Um, we've got 750 Mazdas, who are always good fun. So they've got three races over the weekend. Um, 750 Hot Hatch, as well as our own Hot Hatch. We're running all weekend and there's another one to be confirmed and i'm waiting for an email hopefully tomorrow which i can't say who that is but hopefully that's another race on the saturday so there'll be 10 races on the saturday um and then on the sunday i'm, I'm losing your signal at the minute steve hang on two seconds is it Let's me or is it right. you that one's you because you keep going the, the zone out. Incidentally, while that's just refreshing, I love this comment because this is brilliant. Uh, and I do think it's okay because we're both officially Bristolian. But it says, watching these subtitles, trying to translate that Bristolian boat is great fun. <laughs> the one on the right depends. Is the, I'm seeing you on the right. I, I, Are they seeing you or me on the right? I'm not sure. Well, I, I I don't know. I don't know, really, yeah. but that's quite... But a you're not a Bristolian thought, anyway, are you? So they must be talking about me. I am. I am, mate, but I've <laughs> I've poshed it up for presentations, <laughs> mate, haven't I? I have. More than I have. Me yeah. babber, sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, me babber has come on, me lover. Uh, yeah, anyway, sorry, what were you saying? So we've got um, a home championship, but we, there's something you can't tell us that's hopefully... There's, a, there's like another race that, it, you know, hasn't been confirmed yet. I know it's late in the year, but these things happen. Um, so there's another, hopefully another race on the Saturday, uh, another two races, sorry, on the Saturday. So that'll make, um, yeah, 10 races on the Saturday. Um, and then on the Sunday, we've got the same, you know, stuff again, Millie Millias, Mini Sevens, 
750 hot hatch. The Mazda's got two races and the Welsh Racing Drivers Club are coming as well. So We haven't seen them for a little while, actually, have we? They haven't been for three years. The last time they came was when we had to cancel the day. Oh, God, really? They were going to come when we were having COVID and then there was another one before. And yeah, they ju it just hasn't happened. So hopefully they'll come. So, yeah, um, that's, that's going to be a very busy day on the Sunday. Um, so our guys, you know, the... At the moment, I think the hot hatcher, our hot hatch and the Formula Fords run on the Saturday, and then the GTs and the saloons run on the Sunday. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, it's going to be a busy, busy day or a busy weekend. Well, but uh, it's not lots not to like. Jackie Fay says, John Ford is already cringing at the thought, Steve. Did you hear him scream? And don't forget, he's just a humble trainee. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he loves it, really. He loves it. I Absolutely. Mean, what else would he be doing? If I've been told because we're supposed. I'm supposed. I'm supposed to be trying to have a Coombe TV show with the rescue crew, and I've been told that there's no way will Mr. Ford agree to come on. And I'm like, well, that makes it even more fun then if he doesn't want to. Yeah, he's, he's a bit shy and retiring. So. And I've never noticed that about him, to be honest. So mm. I don't buy it. I'm afraid. Uh, incidentally, by the way, is that Sean Lewis did change it to uh, the Bristolian bloke on the left. And then he's also said, I changed it to the left now. Steve knows my observational skills well enough. So, you know, Sean. We, we all know Sean very well. Yes. Yeah. Both of us went down there. Uh, Nigel Forrest up at Owen Park says, think we have British GTs that weekend. So there you go. It goes to show that it is a busy weekend across the board. So we, we can't, Absolutely. can't win, can't lose on that one. So, uh, so there we go. Uh, classic sports car club race weekend. That's not a Castle Coon racing club weekend. So you've had no involvement in that one, have you? No, we'll, we'll work with the classic sports car club to facilitate what they need to do so generally we'll you know we'll work together for the marshals and uh you know the admin within the building so we make sure they've got what they need basically but they there'll be no coom races on that weekend i shall be there though so i'm not there for the summer spectacular but i am back for that one how bad's yeah. that i feel, I feel <laughs> about that one but yeah i the should problem. be over in uh, david george's commentary box over in uh, old paddock for that mark where will be in the main one for uh, that commentary box he and i the problem is with on. that one chris just so that the you know the home championships know that if we ran on that weekend we'd have to pay for the track time so you know when somebody else hires a circuit they obviously need to make money um and it was deemed because of the, the way the year spread out, which isn't too bad as far as dates are concerned, um, because we got the early August 1, 6th of August, um, it, it was better to not run at that weekend, which would cost us money. Um, yeah, yeah. So, you know, oh, just, and, and let's not lose sight of the fact is that there's normally like a couple where it's uh, it's other clubs that are running it. So uh, it's done well that uh, that's that's those guys uh, doing that one. It will still be a cracking weekend. Classic sports club. I mean, they have, club. Yeah, they have great weekends, it's don't good. they? You know, big field, Absolutely. big bridge. I, so, I, yeah, I mean, we've got to work I, with I travel around with them. them a little bit, so it's good fun. I, I, they, are, they are good, so it'll be a good weekend for everyone to catch up on. Um... Saturday, the 6th of August, Coombe Carnival Race Day. Is that yeah, TCR? That's, that is TCR, yeah. Um, and I spoke to Stuart Lines today, funny enough, and he's he's hopeful Ooh. that he's going to get 32. Me or Steve's gone there. i got a feeling Storm Eunice is starting to come in and affect <laughs> this uh, connection at the moment. Oh, there you go. You're back again. Now, I don't I'm know if I'm honest, right, uh, uh, Steve, because it kind of is refreshing everything. I've got a feeling Storm uh, Eunice is starting to, uh, yeah, it says it's fairly unstable. So it may well be at my end, but that doesn't make sense. But uh, let's carry on. Is that, carry yes, on. that, yeah. uh, that, that, <laughs> that. So the 6th of August is is TCR um, or TCR UK because they are now, a, now got championship status. Um, and speaking of Stuart Lines today, um, he's hopeful of 30 car grid, um, which is a great problem to have because I have no idea how we're going to fit all the Arctics and stuff in the paddock. Um, <laughs> and he's also bringing his Civic Cup. So um, as there's, he wants to, you know, it is becoming a, a TCR uh, touring car type 
thing. He wants to, you know, big it up and make it bigger and, and take it places, which he seems to be doing very well. Um, and it will be probably one of the busiest events in the paddock, if nothing else. Um, and I think you were there last year when they, they came um, and they had two, you know, split grid with the TCRs on the, the, um, the Volkswagen Cup. Yeah. Um, this is purely TCRs now. So, um, and some pretty interesting names that are racing it. If anybody is unsure, go and check out the uh, uh, the, the 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 TCR Facebook group and uh, TCR UK, sorry, Facebook group and everything. Honestly, it's gonna be a whole other level. I mean, Joe Coffin's made a comment: thirty TCRs in the pit lane. Gasp! Absolutely. I mean, because they set yeah, up uh, they set up that sort of. I don't know yeah, how they're we, gonna do it that many really. Uh, but, we 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 set that up last year. Um, yeah, myself and um, the TCR guys. We set it all up on the you know the day before, um, and I've already had that conversation. You know that we if they have got thirty cars, absolutely fantastic. But I don't know where we're going to put them all if they want to do the same things again, which they probably will. Um, but they want to do a grid walk. They want to do you know this. They want to do that. So um, it you know Stuart's got these ideas that he wants to put into place and we've left a little bit longer at lunchtime so that he can have all the cars hopefully on the grid and the public can get and, and oh, wander around wow. and, you know a bit of signing of you know it, very much touring cars and I'm sure he's, he's not gonna sort of deny the fact that he's trying to make it you know very similar but a lot cheaper obviously um but for us I think it's probably as far as high profile goes, probably one of the most high profile things we'll have all year. Um, and it's hopefully, special. hopefully so. Yeah. I mean, they, you know, they do want, you know, certain things and it's going to be hard for us at Coombe to, <laughs> to accommodate, you know, those 30 cars are bringing 25 transporters. Um, and that's just TCR. So then we've got to try and accommodate our home championships and series and, and obviously the, the civic cup. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be a busy one, but you know, if we want to want to grow and want the circuit to grow, then we need to try and attract that sort of thing. Um, and hopefully, they will stick to the circuit as well, and not uh, <laughs> not trash it. <laughs> I'm sure it's Les that's having kittens about that one. Um, You're going to be putting like the um, tires on the apex of some of the corners no. again. No, no, because we did do that, didn't we? When they were there, we did, time. and then you know, the first corner of the first lap they hit them didn't they and they went all over the place and you know, tires tires on corners are dangerous we all know that um and yeah motorsport uk are very against it on on all corners um but you know we've obviously got tires at the chicanes which especially the formula fours don't like uh you know that they're not they're not ideal but it's it's a, a means to an end because otherwise we just go back to all the problems we have with track limits and stuff like that so yeah i mean i hope I think, honestly, I think the TCR were much better behaved last year than they were the first year they came. They just seemed to be a bit calmer and a bit more professional about what they were doing. You know, I don't know if they've, they'd had words or whatever, but I mean, 30, 30 TCRs going around Corey is going to be quite a spectacle. It's, I just, I cannot wait. Uh, people say is that when I get excited, I go uh, 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 supersonic on the microphone. I think it's fair. I'm probably going to be right up there for that one. It's going to be epic. Uh, someone who knows that, Sam Strong, uh, lives a stone's throw from Brands Hatch. Hello, mate. Great to hear from you, buddy. I can't wait to catch up with you. There's that gin, Dorsey. Yes, it is, mate. Uh, look forward to seeing you at American Speed Fest. See you there, mate. I'm sure I see you before then. I'm at Brands Hatch a, a good few times this year as well. Uh, next one, uh, just so you're aware, and it's not something we're going to be able to talk about now, but on the uh, 20th and 21st of August, we got the Motorcycle Grand National Race Weekend. I'm right in saying we can't really talk much about that, am I, Steve? Yeah, I mean, I yeah, I don't get involved in bikes. They're, you know... No. They two I, wheels and they fall off a lot. That's all I know. Mean. I, I would love to, and I know that uh, Martin will be uh, on the mic for that one, and uh, and I'm hoping to one day get involved in that because I do love the bikes. They're awesome. So if you've not been, 20th, 21st of August, uh, the Motorcycle Grand National Race Weekend, absolutely brilliant without question. 29th of August, Bank Holiday Monday, Coombe Countdown Race Day, Steve. Yeah, that's, um, that's HRDC. Uh, coming back again so same as they did last year with their um, all-stars 
um, Zach Sears Trophy in the Classic Alpha. So they put on a good show last year with some really special cars. Um, they love the day. That does, well, it doesn't actually clash, but that is when they've moved the Silverstone Classic to that weekend, haven't they? So um, they wanted to, to come to Coombe instead of all going to Silverstone Classic. So I think that's quite nice that they, you know, they, um, Julius Thurgood is, is, you know, the guy that pushes that and runs all that. And he spoke to me early in the year and he's, he's, they told him the date of the Silverstone Classic and he looked at it with his, his competitors and, and they decided they'd, they'd rather come to Coombe. So, uh, wow. should be a good, good race day. Well done, mate. That's absolutely brilliant. And but I think the but Marshall without, can't struggle. Just those of, or with ours as well? Ours as well. Yeah. So, and hopefully, um, on at the end of that day, we'll we'll run um, what has been the um, GT Challenge, but we're going to try and incorporate it into the Dave Allen Trophy, so it just That's becomes right. yeah. one race. Um, so yeah, it, you know, it will still be called along the lines of the Dave Allen Trophy, but it may be the the GT Challenge for the Dave Allen Trophy or whatever. There's a lot of um, discussions to be had around that, but um, obviously with Honda not being involved anymore, uh, it seemed a shame to to let it slip. Um, you know, Dave was associated with the circuit and, and locally, so we just want to try and keep the, the name going uh, and the trophy going. So it seemed a good good idea that the GT Challenge uh, didn't take off last year for one reason or another. So we'll try and sort of do a, a GT Saloon Challenge Dave Allen trophy race. So like hopefully try and get, you know, set it, at, set it at a price where people do want to enter it at the end of the day because that's always a problem you know, when people have been racing, um, is trying to get the cars to survive that long and, and also, you know, money. Uh, and that because they haven't finished the championship, some people wouldn't want to race in it. But there is quite a gap between um, between that one and uh, the finals day. No, exactly right. Yeah, no, that's cool. I, I, ironically, and, and I didn't realise realize until that long ago, is that... Uh, my David Lloyd Jim, yeah, I use the spa there. Um, the uh, one of the the uh, the ladies up there is uh, Dave Allen's widow. Uh, oh right, okay. Yeah, she's a lovely lady, and uh, and she tends to sort of go to the to the race meets when it's the Dave Allen Trophy as well. And yeah, the like, family the family always come along and and present a trophy. So and there's a few yeah. people involved at Keen that you know have been involved with them and the family for a long time. So yeah, it it would be a shame to let it go. So. Agreed. There's no reason no. why not, you know, just we can keep it going as a club. We don't need Honda's involvement got less and less, obviously, with the troubles they were having at the hey, time. So. Swindon surviving without Honda's involvement, so can Coombe, mate. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Joe Coffin says, saw a great quote from the WEC race director today, uh, which was, don't damage my garden from his, ra- his driver briefings. Use that for the TCRs. I like that. That's a good one. Mm. Uh, Kieran says, how do we get Gary Preble in a TCR car? That would be good, wouldn't it? That would be good. But I think he's going to dip into his pocket. He'd have to dip into his own pocket for that one. Sorry. <laughs> but uh, I would love to see that. I agree, Kieran. That would be absolutely wicked to see. Um, okay. Uh, 24th of September. And I don't know how much you can say. On- I know you can, can't you? Auto yep. Classic. One day this year, isn't it? Not two. Yes, yeah, single day, single day. Um, and I'm not sure if you're cutting out or me again, Chris, but um, it's a single day and it's moved from its traditional first weekend of October uh, so that it doesn't clash with the spa six hours, um, which has been a, a major problem for us financially over the last two years because a lot of people were going to the six bar and it sounds like they're keeping that at the same weekend the first weekend in October. So we've decided to move uh, move the Autumn Classic to the 24th of September. So there'll be none of our, our uh, championships or series involved in that. But it's also, it's not the, 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 the end of the year. We finish with our finals day, don't we? We actually, which will be a bit bizarre because we actually have finals at the end of the year. But it, it is, will be. The finals is the finals. <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah, it, it, hopefully it'll work out fine. Um, it's not, obviously that far apart uh for our one week isn't it <laughs> yeah so a lot of work for us with you know 
the Autumn Classic is always our biggest event as far as um, admins concerned, because they, you know, the Classic fraternity are fairly needy, but um, and a lot of them as well, aren't a they? A lot of them, uh, and obviously that will be um, the Formula Three Five Hundreds, Fist Car, GT and Sports Car Cup, and there's a new um, a Curie Classic which is included in the Jags. So we we sort of went out to the to all the people that were involved in the last couple of years. The, the grids haven't been massive, and we all know COVID had a lot to do with that. But we sort of went out and said that you know, what people want to see is a lot of cars, a lot of classic cars, um, racing at the circuit. And the Acuri guy came to us and said, "Well, he's been running with the Jags, so he can bring what he's bringing, and the Jags can run within that. So you've got the the, the Jack." the Jags plus this Acuri Classic Racing, and obviously the um, GT Sports Car people, uh, Vanessa and Flavian, are, are launching the GT, um, the Touring Cars, Group 1 Touring Cars, which will be yeah. absolutely fantastic uh, looking at what they're proposing because they've got a huge amount of contacts, uh, you know, within the that sort of classic fraternity. Um, and I think if, if it... It's one of those things that on paper looks absolutely fantastic. And who doesn't like touring cars, uh, classic touring cars, especially. So uh, if it takes off and we're, you know, we'll, we'll go on the journey with them, but they, they're, they're very keen people um, to, 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 to get it as a, make it a success. Um, and if we can help them do that, then so be it. And also the um, HSCC, their new, uh, and I've forgotten the name of it, which is a bit embarrassing. But they've got a new series that there was associated with Coombe back in the fifties. Uh, awesome! So that it is be... this special day. If anybody's never been to the Autumn Classic, go for it. I can't wait for that one. Actually, I'm uh, I'm not in the box. I'm out doing the interviews. And anybody who knows, the last time I was out doing the interviews uh, for Autumn Classic, I was in some pretty interesting outfit. Pretty yeah. uh, uh, Scooby Doo and something like that, wouldn't it? it? Look more like, to be honest. We're expecting but, something that even more spectacular this time, Chris. I, it's got to be done, isn't it, mate? It's got to be done. So I, I, I am genuinely looking forward to that one. Uh, as Mike says, let's hope for decent weather. Agreed. Uh, by the way, Papa Pa says they do good breakfast fry up at David Lloyd Jim Chris. I know, mate. Hey, listen, they do a good eggs Benedict, and in fact, they do a a, a, a pizza stack where you get three different pizzas and some some uh, potatoes as well it's brilliant it's brilliant it's really what healthy what sort of gym is this you go to they, they, I they Jim, make... you went to gyms get fit no there's a sauna there's a steam room <laughs> apparently the crazy people go upstairs but i don't know uh no, yeah. i'm only joking i do spin classes there and all sorts honestly it's crazy i thought you're gonna say you've never been upstairs but... it took a while it took a while mate i was a member for a good while before i did <laughs> um and then, of course, we've got Grand Finals Day on Saturday, the 1st of October. Yeah, so the, it will be the, our home championships and series final day. So where the champions will be crowned, hopefully we'll take it to the end of the season. Okay. We won't get to say too soon. Um, and you know Minis what, will be back. Up, no matter what, mate. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. They, won't, they can't all be done and dusted by then, surely. Uh, so, yeah, the Mighty Minis will be back. And it, I think it will be their last race of the season as well. So they'll be having their, their final two races of the season. Uh, Monopostos is coming back with the Tideman Trophy, which again, haven't been back for two years, three years. Yeah, and um, I like that because it mixes it together. It's the, They'll have finished their championship season because uh, the Monopostos I co I've covered a lot of times over the, the, the last however many years at different places. And they'll have finished their championship season and then they have the Tideman Trophy that is, is over... I think three different circuits. I haven't seen this year. It's either two or three different circuits. Two, yeah, two or three usually. Yeah. So I'm not. I haven't actually had a look to see if it's their last bit, their last round. Then, but um, they, they they sort of mix more of them together in that as well, rather than splitting them out as much as they do the rest of the season. So it's really exciting. Yeah, it's a bit of an all-comers type thing, isn't it? Anything mm. single seater goes. I think so. Yeah, that should be good. And also. Um, the Intermark Silhouettes, which is Richard Colvahouse's oh, wow. new thing. So, yeah, it's, it's a good, again, 11 races. Should be a fantastic end to the season, hopefully. And we know how good the Intermark Silhouettes are because, of course, we've been enjoying watching Ollie Bull in the, in our GTs in that uh, orange and white Tigra. Yeah. Uh, and, in fact, um, 
we also uh, what's his face also rocked up with another tiger at some point. In fact, I think we had a couple of different tigers. Yeah, but they came to the. We, I'm just trying to think. Yeah, they came um, together, didn't they? And they yeah, a green one and a yellow and blue one with a union flag yeah. roof. I just remember them. Yeah. So yeah, a good few of them getting around the circuit will be. They good. are good. They are good. They are wicked fun. Uh, first comment then, Steve, because I can say this, you can't, is that well done, mate. Absolutely brilliant. I mean, it just sounds like a fantastic season. People don't realise just how hard you have to work. Oh, oh, there we go. That confirms it. Thanks, Emma. Uh, of course it is. Russ Humphrey. Russell Humphrey is one of them. Yeah. The yellow and blue ones is. And Gav Bristow is the green one, sort of metallic uh, green as well. Thanks, Em. Um, the gin was kicking and I couldn't remember. Uh <laughs> It, it, you have to work so hard. I mean, I've always said it's like piecing together a jigsaw puzzle, isn't it? Well, it's, I mean, it's sorry, you cut out again. Then it it is, you know, I do it because I love it, and I'm, obviously now I get paid uh, to do it as well. And I'm in the office twice a week, which is more than I used to be, so it does make it a little bit easier. But we've now taken on the minis as well, so it's just more work. But if we can get to the end of each race day and everybody's had a good time and you know people have seen good racing that's that's why i do it um because i want to see good racing myself not i get to see much of it to be honest I probably <laughs> yeah. have no clue what's going on during the day most of the time when we're involved in race control or you know whatever i'm doing on the day um but it's it's quite satisfying to get to the end of the, each race meeting and i think yeah you know i did that it's it's you know people have been entertained and everybody's had a good good day or weekend so um, and, and i have to say is that i think that across the board is that and i know we always have it is that we have the complete spectrum of uh, obviously the racing drivers themselves listening to what they've got played out including what they're racing and what they get to see while on their the days that they're racing the uh the, the spectators obviously what we've got going on at the circuit which honestly across the board it just sounds so exciting i mean sure the tcr is going to probably be the crescendo i like the fact that's in the middle but there's just so much excitement all around it i cannot wait genuinely and of course the mighty orange army that um are, are going to be out there in in no matter what the weather they're the number one spectators because they're they're there helping to to make the day work and in fact tim perry one of them says and says Sounding epic, Steve. Looking forward to the season. Well done on all your hard work. I mean, I think that's a lovely comment. Uh, Darren Duffield, one of our racers, races in the mini. It's looking like it's going to be a great year. That's what I, you know, I'm, I want to make sure that you take away from this as well, Steve. Yeah, I mean, like I say, I'm in it because I, I love it. The same as you, Chris, really, and the same as everybody else that's involved in the club, running the club and, and involved with the club on, on the sort of, outer edges really you know we do it because we love motorsport um you know I, I still marshal i still go to silverstone to marshal because i like to get away from what i do at Coombe and actually stand on the bank and and get physically involved so i still do that not as much as i'd like um but it, you know i do like to see the wife down again not that she, you know she never complains and she is actually marshaling herself now but um she, uh, i don't mean to stir but she doesn't say the same mate uh, yeah i know yeah, I'm only joking. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie Faye says a jigsaw puzzle when you don't know what the picture is, but you know what you'd like it to be. That's yes. brilliant. That is brilliant, Jackie. That sums it up. Uh, Sam Strong says, well done, Steve. I hope you can, and I agree with this, by the way, and I know he races in this. I hope you can get the BMW Compact Cup Championship there and back there because, of course, we have had them there. Coombe is such a great track. I've missed it. Such a flowing and fast track. Yeah, but believe it or not, I've already had that. <clears throat> I've already had that conversation um, about this year, and we couldn't make it work, so they are already penciled in for twenty twenty three. So there you go, Sam. Breaking news. You'll be in my. Uh, you'll be back in my hood, mate. It'd be brilliant to see you uh, uh, back there. And and the camp BMW Compact Cups always brilliant entertainment. This is always the problem. Um, you know, I always start the year with with blank timetables, so I get given the dates, and then I just get blank timetables, and I I gradually fill those days in and i speak to the people that have been um you know so at the end of this year and as as people come it's you know have you had a good time do you want to come back next year and then there's there's people like the bmw come back that we we've had a discussion um two or three discussions and and they generally get given their their calendar by the club that are running them 
and then they try and fit in a few other reins and stuff like that and it just didn't work this year and there's several others like that um you know bcv 8s didn't work out last year or coming this year so you know you just try and try and juggle it around because nobody wants to see the same thing every time uh so yeah we it's a, it is a juggling act but there, there's a lot of stuff out there we can't attract certain things a because of the noise and b because of the facilities but you know we can keep attracting hrdc and tcr and you know, they're big players in the motorsport thing so yeah we can only can only be good for us we just need to try and keep up <laughs> Uh, no, love it, Steve. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, thanks, Andy Abrams as well. Also said, good show, guys. Thank you for that. Uh, it's been a, it's been an interesting uh, mix of things. Emma Strawford says, uh, looking like a great season ahead. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> Sam Strong from the BMW Compact Cup says, we'll be quiet, Steve. Yeah. Absolutely, you're fine. You're fine. Uh, although you're not quiet, Sam, at all. You're never quiet. Uh, but uh, it, it, it just brilliant job, mate. Um, I, I don't know about you, but I'm like super, super excited. 26th of March is kind of like the uh, the next starter pistol that will be. Well, sorry, let's go back. Is that we've got, what did you say? It was the 6th of March, the Marshalls? 6th of March is the main training day for the Marshalls, yeah, on the Sunday. So that, for, for the people that really matter, that's the first starter pistol really there. Then the 26th of March when we've got the uh, the media and the track day and the awards in the evening. I shall be hot telling it back from Silverstone to get back for that before heading back for day two at Silverstone on the Sunday. Um, and then, of course, we get to Easter Monday and we get Howard's Day and we're really underway. And, and it's just such an eclectic mix. Our very own newbie cat said, "Looking forward to being part of this," and and that's lovely to hear, and 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 that's exciting itself. Uh, Tim Perry says, "Awesome show, Dawson and Steve. Good to hear what is coming up this year. I will be there. The good news is, Steve, so will we. Yeah. Otherwise, it, if you're not there, mate, it don't float. Well, I mean, hopefully, you know, we've done our bit. So all we need now <laughs> is the guys to turn up and race. Really, if um." That's the, the only worry we get at this time of year is is that nobody's going to turn up and race. So uh, the the circuit's there to be raced on. Um, so if they want to turn up and race and have a good time, then it you know we've done our best. So most of most of my job is done. So I can well, sit back and relax. He says that's not, that's not fair. Not believing you. I know no. that's not true. But Matt Cole, the Saloon Car Championship uh, coordinator, says this is looking like an awesome season. It's been two years of chaos. Believe you, me, mate. You don't know the half of what's been going on behind the scenes. I can tell you, it's been horrific for the whole team. Uh, thank you, Steve, for hard work. Can't wait for my sixth season with the Coombe family. And I echo that, Steve. Thank you so much uh, for your work. Um, it, as a fan, first and foremost, is that I'm absolutely ecstatic with what you set up there. I can't wait for it to get going. And, and I'm buzzing now. I don't know about you. I'm buzzing now that we've kind of rethought about it all again. Yeah. I think every time you play that montage, when, when you start, you, you play the montage with the music um, yeah. and it you know gets you. And hopefully I've got a new one. I need to check tomorrow. Um, so we got last year's montage so that people don't see the same thing. Well, make um, sure I've got it then, all right? Because then I can play it. <laughs> I've got to make sure I've got it first. Uh, yeah. But yeah, when you know when you play that sort of thing and you look at it and you, you see the cars on the circuit, uh, it just it you just can't wait. And it seems like a long way away. But we know um, we we got a Zoom meeting on Monday about Marshall's training day. Uh, you know, the team work again working behind the scenes. There's a big team of people that that get together, and we've been doing this all winter. Uh, preparing for the, the Marshalls training day, which bizarrely, most of the effort at the moment is going into the media day, but the Marshalls training day is before that. So yeah. it's only a few weeks away. So, you know, there's a big push behind the scenes now. Uh, and thanks, all, you know, public to all the guys that are involved in that because, you know, there's a lot of work that goes on in it and in all these events behind the scenes. But, um, yeah, we're all in it for the same reason and, and I'm just happy to be part of it. And that includes thank you, Richard. Get well soon, Richard Beard, and uh, and, and all the work he does, obviously, as the uh, uh, head of the marshals. Uh, Chris Mason says, looking forward to the year ahead. And incidentally, for those who don't know, Chris Mason's on the Castle Coon Racing Club board as well now, which is brilliant from the medical side. Wicked to have you on board, mate, because we know another one that cut him in half and he'd bleed Castle Coom in reality. Steve, anything else that you need to add for, for all of the... I don't well, think so, Chris. No, I think we've covered it all. Hopefully, people will enjoy what we the show we put on and the show that they put on. So, yeah, nothing else to add. Thanks, mate. Well, the perfect thing. Pete Spiller says, uh, evening, gents. Apologies for being late. Uh, I hope I haven't missed anything. Not at all. That was nope. the show. Thank you yeah. very much. 
and a very good evening to you all. Thanks, guys. Have a great coming up weekend. We're starting soon. Bye.